Hi there, it's Adrian Brown from Tabita Serve, and welcome to the fifth interview in my series, Interview with Champions. And today I'm in the Lake District, just sitting oh, just the right. shore of <laughs> Lake Windermere, and I'm here with Stephen Hargreaves, the founder and owner of the Cranley Boutique Hotel. And Steve, before I go into the interview and start talking about the business we're going to talk about, how did you get to be the owner of this wonderful hotel? Um, by accident. So I purchased my first hotel 11 years ago, which is known as the Cranley. Um, and that was a uh, 11 years ago this month. So what, what made you buy a hotel? Um, it was by accident. It was, I'd, I'd been on a course, actually, mm -hmm. through a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and we were sat there chatting one day about marketing. Right. And uh, this is the gentleman that does all my branding, actually. Mm -hmm. And he said, there's a guy that I think you need to come and meet. Yeah. And I said, what's it about? He said, it's about this thing called Google. And at the time, I had no understanding of what Google was, right. uh, nor did a lot of people really no. back then. And I sat down with this guy who told me all about how Google was going to change the world. So this will be about 13 years ago. And I left that meeting extremely frustrated. And my friend actually called me and said, look, I'm really, really sorry that you had, I, I presume you haven't enjoyed that experience with this guy and mm -hmm. spent four hours with him. He said, because you left and you were really, really annoyed. Um, and I said, no, I said, it was the most amazing experience I think I've ever had. I said, my frustration is now is what I do with the knowledge that he'd just given me. And within probably a year or 18 months of that, uh, the opportunity to buy a hotel came up. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've always been in property and it, 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 the deal made sense at the time. But once I've got my hands on it, I thought, right, okay, now I can use what I've learned mm -hmm. to, um, on this hotel and, um, and to create something that was a bit unique and a bit different, but also to be able to market it using, at that time, Google. You had, so marketing was your background or property um, background? Marketing always fascinated me. Yeah. Right. Because it is this, I mean, when we talk, when I talk to, to customers, we talk about the entire customer journey and mm -hmm. the, you know, it, every, every customer journey starts with attraction. Correct. And then it's this whole setting up the expectations of that customer to experience something and then it's actually delivering that experience or probably just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But then the secret is that lovely long tail of never-ending relationship with that customer because they yep. keep coming back again and again, which is the the gold standard. You know mm -hmm. that is you know it's what everybody wants to achieve. The reason for doing these interviews, we've been talking to you know Jeffrey Gelardi and we've been talking to Diego Maschiaga and Simon Lewis, which is all about how they've created brands that stick and mm -hmm. that stickability of a brand to the yep. customers so they keep coming back is is what we all want. Mm -hmm. I think the service industry, from my perspective, is one where. The bit that gets missed often is the effective marketing. So people can do marketing, but effective marketing to me is one that sets you sets that customer up to be stickable. Yeah. No, to, sets them up to actually come and, and yep. last. If you go back to those early days, and, and we came across each other in 2012 mm -hmm. when you won the Entrepreneur's Circle Marketing Award mm -hmm. for, I think, no, the social, social media. Social media. Yeah. social media. You, know, you are a champion of that. You, you really did master that brilliantly. What was it about the hotel that you thought, oh, I can use my marketing in that business rather than going buying a restaurant or going buying something else? Uh, well, we've done a restaurant and bar since, as you know. Right. But the, the great thing about a hotel is, um, and the great thing about marketing now is, is, is you know, the use of video and, and, uh, and photography. Mm -hmm. And if you've got great video and great photography, then um, you can market that mm -hmm. easier to people online through yeah. Facebook and, and, and all the different mediums, Instagram, etc., that we have now to, to use. And what is it about that sort of, I mean, go back to setting the attraction, the expectation, I suppose, visually, mm -hmm. without having to use too many words, you are creating the expectation of what people, especially your church yeah. suites, which I've been talking about. picture says a yeah. thousand words. Yeah. And that's the beauty of internet, uh, using photography and using video. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't read things anymore mm -hmm. so it's uh, we are very visual people it's how we, it's how our brains work as human beings marketing is very much about psychology it's mm -hmm. about understanding what people want to hear what they want to see what they want to smell what they want to touch so if you can create a product that basically gives them those experiences mm -hmm. and then you can market that to them through video photography and the written word to some degree mm -hmm. um, then it's a great product to be able to use and mm -hmm. sell online Interesting. you picked a couple of things in there which I want to pick out which is this you know the senses yeah so we do have this wonderful ability in the hotel industry or the hospitality industry industry and I'll include uh, spas and salons restaurants clubs bars anything where we're delivering that physical service if you like to the guest 
we had this ability to touch the customer, mm -hmm. either physically or but in our service. And it's very personable. It's it's face to face. It's real. It is it is a communication. It is a relationship. The way we do that through the internet, though, is really interesting because you're you're not able to do it. So you're setting up an expectation which you've then got to deliver. Yeah. How hard is it then to make sure you deliver what I mean, you've set up? It's, it's very hard. I mean, being in business nowadays is hard. Anyone that knows, or anyone that is in business knows it's tough. And you've always got to drive yourself, your team, um, to, to move forward, to try and be better than your competition, and also continually come up with new things that you can uh, engage mm -hmm. your customers to come and stay with, with you. So it's, it's, it's challenging, it's hard. Business is hard. So let's go back to 2012. Uh, you've got the hotel and you now want to really sort of not launch it but drive the business. You were at about 75% occupancy. Mm -hmm. You were spending a lot of money with OTAs. Correct. Yeah. And you went, oh, I want to do something different. Yeah. I <laughs> so mean, how did that happen? It's, it was just Don't a say in a bar or anything like that. No, it, <laughs> it was in a bar. Um, but uh, the. We, we'd worked out that we were about 30 or 40 percent of our bookings were coming through third parties. Mm -hmm. Booking.com, late rooms, um, at, the, at that time, mm -hmm. Travel Zoo, uh, Living Social, and uh, Groupon, etc., didn't mm -hmm. really exist at that time. So it was mainly through third party booking engines that we mm -hmm. were generating, um, you know, 30 to 40 percent of our bookings. But obviously, we're paying commission on all of those. And I thought, right, there must be a way of. Um, you know, limiting using these these third parties because as much as we need them, we don't want them. Yeah. As as a hotelier, um, and, and and any hotelier will not, will will feel the same way. We don't want to be giving 15, 20 percent commission away to people sending us business. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd rather have that for ourselves. So it, it was it was it was when Facebook um, was obviously big, mm -hmm. and it was when you could use Facebook in a different way than we can now. Mm -hmm. Uh, that I thought, right, okay, if I can create huge engagement on Facebook, mm -hmm. then basically that's going to create more awareness of my product, um, which will in turn generate more bookings. And it was as simple as that, is what can we do, rather than paying commission, what could we do in our own business mm -hmm. to, um, to, to push what we did? Um, and using video, mm -hmm. and using photography, and using the written word, and understanding the psychology of your customer is basically how I did it. Mm -hmm. So it was giving a, a, a accommodation away, mm -hmm. allowing people to come and stay with us. If so they, the experience, you're yeah, giving away the experience. We were giving away the experience for free mm -hmm. in return for them basically talking about us online. My first, the first time I actually did it was unbelievable. I put a post out where I said you win, win a night in this particular suite, I think it was our sanctuary suite at the time, mm -hmm. with a private hot tub etc. And it went viral, it just mm -hmm. went insane to the mm -hmm. point where you were literally re-scrolling your phone mm -hmm. and there'd be another thousand likes on it, mm -hmm. another thousand likes every every five or ten minutes with another mm -hmm. thousand likes. And I couldn't believe the engagement it created, I mm -hmm. think we ended up with something like 40,000 likes on that particular post right. um, and, 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 and you know 20 or 30,000 shares. Mm -hmm. So suddenly my growth on Facebook happened overnight right. and it was, it was by accident that really happened mm -hmm. and then I thought right I've, I'm onto something here so that's what I kept doing. I kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, but then you did something really quite clever because you actually, because you were getting the likes on Facebook yeah. and that's the, the big challenge of any social platform is yeah. a Facebook like is very useful and very valuable. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's still push marketing, mm -hmm. where you get to the pull marketing size, where you've got the email address, where you can actually yeah. engage them. But this is the whole point. In order for them to win a mm -hmm. night uh, in the hotel, they had to, they had to, you know, what we created, we created a squeeze page. Yeah. So we're using Facebook as a squeeze page. Yeah. So they would click on a link, that would take them to somewhere where they would enter their name, email mm -hmm. address, etc. That would go into our database. Uh, and they'd enter a competition. Right. So we grew our database about 100,000 people within the first year just doing that. In a year? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and the prizes escalated, didn't they? Because actually the top yeah, prize, we, I seem to remember, was quite extraordinary. Yeah, the, when we got to 100,000 likes, we gave away the entire hotel for a weekend. To one person off that to list? To one person and their entire family and friends, yeah. I mean, just the excitement of that. Uh, you know, when, you, when, you, when, you, when we look at marketing, I think a lot of people do marketing without being bold. Mm-hmm. And I think it would be fair to say that you were bold 
plus, mm-hmm. probably double plus, because you took something that was extraordinary and you gave it away for free yeah. after you'd reached the target. Yeah. And that giving it away for free was probably cheaper, or I know Correct. it was cheaper, than Absolutely. what you'd spent on OTA. So uh, you, oh, you great, gained cheaper. a massive yeah. audience. Com- com- yeah. The excitement of that, how did you make sure that was translated to your staff so that they were in the whole picture as well? Um, when it comes to staff, you've just got to get their, their buy-in to what you're, tr- what you're trying to do. I mean, we do have amazing an amazing staff team. In everything that we do, we seem to be able to attract the right people. Mm-hmm. Um, we look after them. It's mm-hmm. really important that you look after your staff. A lot of people don't look after mm-hmm. the staff. They don't listen to them. Look after them. Mm-hmm. It's so, so important to, to create the best team. You naturally get their buy-in if you're leading them, really, mm-hmm. if I'm honest. And So, it, no, you just use that lovely word, lead. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, misunderstood word in many situations because people go I'm a manager or I'm a leader but actually if you're a manager you're a leader as well and even your shift supervisor Alice on reception last night is a leader uh, for the guest and for organising and and managing people's lives around stuff so she's she's making things happen that's what leaders do you as the leader of the business what made you different to other business leaders passion okay Believing in what you do, yeah, and doing it, and always doing what you say you're going to do, right, um, and always setting new challenges for yourself and for the team, and giving them uh, opportunities within the within the workplace to grow as, mm-hmm. as individuals and people. I spend a lot of time coaching individuals, right. Uh, I bring in um, coaches to coach mm-hmm. my key members of staff. Sometimes uh, when, they, when they're vulnerable in life as human beings, mm-hmm. it might be a relationship that, that, that's gone wrong in their life or a parent dying or they've moved country and come over here to work for us. And there are the challenges um, of that with people. You know, you have to be human with people and you mm-hmm. have to try and help them where they need help. It might not just be the work environment, but if you can help them um, in different ways in their lives, they're, they're, they have your buy-in at a different level then. So they're, your work environment, you. so just go back, you just, so your work environment is a place where you can challenge your staff, yes. you set them challenges. Certain members yeah. of staff, yeah. yeah. Some, 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 you know, some people um, that just want to go to work, yeah. do their job and go home. And that's okay too. Yeah. Um, so they're passengers, but yeah. they're good. They're in. Yeah, they're absolutely, I, you, I, need, you need them to oh make yeah. the business work. I have a category, four categories of employees. So there's the contributors. Those yeah. are the ones that you can challenge that are really there. They're your deep relationship people that really understand the business. Yeah. Then there's passengers, and which mm-hmm. are either proud passengers. And a, dis- a distinction between a proud passenger and an indifferent passenger. A proud passenger, if they see the broken light bulb, they'll at least tell you about it, mm-hmm. right? They might fix it themselves, but they'll at least tell you that there's a yeah. problem. The indifferent passenger will see it, walk past, they'll do their job, but they're not going to just put that little extra bit in to tell you. They just come and do it. Yes. Then you've got mavericks. Now, mavericks are interesting because they may be potential contributors, but they just don't understand the game. So they've come to play rugby on your tennis court, Mm -hmm. you know, but they show up as a maverick, but they're great sportsmen. Yeah. But they're just in the wrong bloody pitch. (laughs) And then you've got terrorists. And they're very rare. You know, they're very clever. But if you find one, obviously you need to have them leave mm-hmm. as soon as possible because they undermine everything you're yes, doing. Yes, they do. Yeah. And, and we've all experienced those at the different times. not to employ them. But they're it. so good, <laughs> sometimes they get through. But the, um, the thing about the, those proud, and to a certain extent in different passages, those people is, uh, if you listen to Diego and to, to Jeffrey Gelardi, is training every day. And I, I got a chance to talk to the amazing um, Lorenzo Giannuzzi, who's the general manager of Forte Village in Sardinia and has yeah. been for 25, 20 years. Yeah. Is. And he talks about it as management by walking. So it's not sitting down with people having meetings. It's going around and watching them and then doing that little bit of coaching mm-hmm. live or doing that little bit of appreciation live, actually at the moment, catching the moment and saying, hey, you just did an amazing thing there. Look at the impact you've had to reinforce it. Yes. So is that your style? Are you a, a walking manager? I'm, I work on my businesses, not in my businesses. Mm-hmm. So I'm not a hotel manager mm-hmm. um, or, or a hotelier by, mm-hmm. by trade at all, really, or by instinct. I'm a business person, mm-hmm. and, uh, but I understand how to market my products mm-hmm. um, and also how to employ the right people to do the best job mm-hmm. for, for, for my companies. Mm-hmm. So... It's uh, my job is to manage managers mm-hmm. um, and, and, and inspire them, look after them and, and, and help them to do the best that they can do and encourage that down to the team. 
And oh. the, the thing you just said then is you don't work in your business. No, I work on the businesses. When I interviewed um, Peter Hancock, who's the CEO of Pride of Britain Hotels, and we're talking about this, the, the, the middle tier of hotels, yep. not the top luxury, not the budget, mm-hmm. that middle tier, which is actually a large number of hotels. They're squeezed from both ends. Yes. And his comment was that often when he goes around looking at the properties, and he looks at lots of properties, you find the owner or Too the involved. general manager Far stuck involved, in yeah. a particular role in the business. all the time. Yeah, and they don't get out. No. So you have got out. Absolutely. You must have started in, or did you no. start with the general manager, Dave um, Bond? No, I did work within mm. the hotel to start with, um, but quickly realised it wasn't the right environment for me. And also, in order to grow a business, you can't work in your business. You yeah. just can't do it. It's yeah. impossible. You have to be working on your business and learning different skills that are going to that's going to help that business grow. The most important skill in the world to know nowadays is marketing. But you have to understand marketing. You can be the best marketer in the world, yeah. but if the system doesn't operate. Yes, no, you have to get that right, but that's back to what I said the before. People. It's about employing the right people. You're growing people in yeah, the business? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, most, it- most, most of my, my team have been with me from very early days. Mm-hmm. Certainly my management, mm-hmm. uh, I've not lost any management mm-hmm. or any hierarchy of member of staff, so it's mm-hmm. about employing people that um, you know, have the right skill set in order to grow a business. Mm-hmm. We've always looked after people from day one before, and let them grow and let them find their own way a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. They've got to make mistakes sometimes. Absolutely. Every business, business is like a game of tennis. So you've got the lines, you've got the net, which are your structural guidelines, if you like, and then you've got the etiquette guidelines of how you expect people to behave. Correct. And, and Everyone I mean, has their own style. Yeah, and you want them to you, deliver that. Well, yes. I mean, it's... One of the things that is my pet hate is when you go to a restaurant and um, the way that you are spoken to as a customer mm. is exactly the same way that they speak to everybody in that restaurant. And they literally say the same things in the way that they introduce themselves, the way they talk about the food. Um, and it's the hotel is trying to tick all the boxes mm-hmm. that actually takes the personality away from what that product is actually meant to be. Yeah. Um, and it becomes a plastic experience. Mm-hmm. I encourage my staff to be who they are, you know, to use their personalities. If they're slightly quirky, that's okay mm-hmm. because they're human. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, we we like people that are that way rather than people that are telling us what they want, what they think we want to hear all mm-hmm. the time, and um, and not be natural about how they speak to you. So, in that sense, when you recruit and employ people like that, mm-hmm. people who have a bit of character, personality, personality. Yeah. They're not just vanilla, right? No. They're going to be different. What's the challenge you have as the owner of a business to make sure that your vision for your business is delivered by everyone, not necessarily the same way, but the results the same for the customer? Um, every customer is different, yeah, and people's expectations are different. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always a challenge mm-hmm. to 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 and I think people's expectations now are um, becoming more and more and more everybody's a hotel inspector now <laughs> yes. uh, you know every everybody it, it thinks they understand the industry in, in, in restaurants and hotels and anyone that owns any restaurants and hotels know it's very different in, in when you when you're running them yourself you've just got to do your best mm-hmm. and you've got to be professional on how you go about doing that so my, my team, my receptionists, if we do have a complaint or um, a situation with a guest that's not happy for whatever reason, we've just got to go out of our way mm-hmm. to solve that problem. And usually by doing that, it's finding out basically how you're going to solve that problem with that guest. So, so what can we do to, to, to put this right for you, Mr. Smith? Mm-hmm. You know, wh- what would you like us to do for you? And sometimes by asking that question, it gives them responsibility to answer um, and it, you know, you, you, what will actually satisfy them. And it might be a small thing, I just need some new pillows on my bed, mm. or I don't like the mattress cover, or whatever mm. it might be, because you know people do have personal tastes. Mm-hmm. So you've just got to go out of your way, but you've got to find out and ask the question. We all get you know, feedback from our guests at different points of times, and I remember um, when I had my own hotel, it was the chairman of Vickers PLC who was staying, and uh, his hot water wasn't working. Mm-hmm. Happens. Um, and it happens. Yeah. He told me at uh, six o'clock, it was fixed by 7.30. He was in dinner, so he still got his bath before he went to bed yep. at night. But in his room, 
because he was the chairman of the company, but actually we then started doing it for everybody, it was a bottle of champagne saying thank you very much. And the person that booked it for Vickers um, came to the office the next morning and said, oh, the chairman's very pleased about the bottle of champagne, thank you very much, blah, blah. Can I, if I find some problems, will you give me a bottle of champagne yeah. too? And I said, actually, yeah, sure. Yeah. He went, really? He said, yeah, it's worth it for me. If you find something that's wrong and we can fix it, that's really yeah. worthwhile. And looking after your product is really, really important. But pro when you're busy, mm -hmm. products do get worn and mm -hmm. you have to change things and update things and that takes time. Closing a room down for us, we're just refurbing two rooms at the moment. Since we, since we launched the Cranley or redeveloped the Cranley 11 years ago, we were the first hotel in this area to do what we did. So everybody's now trying to copy us. Mm -hmm. um, they've all modernised the rooms. They all want to be boutique hotels. The competition has got tighter for mm -hmm. us. So we've now, obviously with, mm -hmm. with what we're doing, um, with the new accommodation, which mm -hmm. is the church suites, took it to a completely different level mm -hmm. than anyone I think had ever done a hotel room in the UK. Um, so it's about trying to push to the next level all the time. But you've got to do that in a way that it works. Yeah. So technology is, you know, is very, very advanced now, and we can mm -hmm. use technology to create um, a special experience for our guests. But the worst thing in the world is when it goes wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's about creating technology that actually is a bit bombproof, mm -hmm. which is challenging. Yeah. Um, which and, we've and managed to, to use. Sort of, yeah, and simple to use because some people, you know, can pick up an iPad mm -hmm. like our, my four-year-old child mm -hmm. and completely understand it yeah. but someone in the 60s might not be able to do that so mm -hmm. you but if if the room is controlled through that device mm -hmm. it needs to be simple mm -hmm. so that so the software needs to work why do you use ipads in your room from the guest perspective it's unique mm -hmm. it's different and the software is really simple we've mm -hmm. designed the software so mm -hmm. it's really really simple Actually, what we've what we've done is you can use the iPad to control mm -hmm. the whole room, mm -hmm. or you can just switch a button on the wall as well. So you can do both. Yeah. Um, so, so you've got the the wow. You've got the wow. But if I want to be normal, absolutely. <laughs> or, yeah. or and, the, and the iPad controls the TVs, the yeah. lighting, the music, and but you can do all that from a switch on the wall as well. Yeah. So you can have the best of both worlds. You tend to find that they'll use both during mm -hmm. the stay because sometimes we just instinctively, if we're walking into the bathroom, we mm. want to we want to press the, you know turn the light on. We don't need to pick up the iPad to turn the lights on to do that. No. Um, so you want to dim the lights. I'm in yeah. bed. I want to dim the lights. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you're catering then to both tastes Correct. or both um, skill sets, effectively. Correct. And making it fun. And making it fun. Yeah. And having something unique to market. Yeah. And the idea is to create the environment. I mean, the the idea behind it was. We sat down and thought, right, okay, what are we trying to do here? Um, and a friend of mine said to me years ago uh, that basically in business, what you want to try and do is think about, okay, what do people want in five or 10 years from now? Mm -hmm. What is that mm -hmm. going to look like? And do it now. Mm -hmm. And we can all think, you know, five, 10 years ahead on what the world's probably going to be like in relation can to you? technology. <laughs> well, we know it's going to get more and more, more advanced yeah. and uh, probably easier to use. Um, so, you know, think wireless this, lighting this, um, and all the things that are happening. Or digits, yeah. um, credit card things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's going to be fingerprint access. We won't mm -hmm. have key cards to get in rooms. We'll mm -hmm. just have our fingerprint. Um, you, you can do that now, but yeah. it's not it's not 100% uh, reliable. So it was thinking five years ahead, what is it that a hotel room is mm -hmm. going to be? And I came up with the, um, to the conclu conclusion, really, that basically we want to be able to, as a guest, control that environment or create that environment we want it th that we want in yeah. that space. And the way that you can do that is through music and lighting mm -hmm. and technology, is we can change the environment to how we want it to be while we're there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we did. That's so how we did it. When I, um, well, I speak on stage or I'm talking, um, I say to people about the experience that 30% of it is down to the tech, the stuff. 70% of it is down to the touch, the people. Mm -hmm. I it's more 50-50, I think. You, you think it's more Yeah, 50 /50? I think it's, it's, it's more, you know, what you're selling. The product has to be good, mm -hmm. uh, and, it ha and, it ha and if, you if you can make it unique and very different, obviously that costs money to do mm -hmm. that, usually, particularly when it comes to technology. And then 50% is, is about the people and about how you deliver that service, definitely. I see it as 50-50. It's interesting. No, but I mean, and I think they are both very important. Um, but when we, um, even talking to Diego Masquiaga and his, and Michel Roux admits that actually the food isn't it, it's the experience. Correct. And so 
the experience is how it's delivered. Yeah. You know, you're thinking in the, rest, in the restaurant, if it's delivered by rote, it's horrible, it's mm-hmm. plastic, it's, it just doesn't yeah. feel like it. Correct. Uh, but here, because you do rely on technology in the rooms, that's when they're in the room. But then the people pe- part of it is how clean that room is, how yes. well it's prepared, yeah. their, their, their greeting, their introduction to the systems, how they're in, taught it, if you like, yes. by your staff. Because yeah. if that bit goes wrong, you can have yeah. the best tech in the world, but it's just... Yeah, I mean, gone. yes, it's true, but we're, and in the next level, we're just, we're just designing and building. We start in about two weeks on a new project, which is going to be a boutique house for mm-hmm. six people. So it's the ultimate place for mm-hmm. six people to come and stay. And that will be a house away from a hotel, about mm-hmm. a mile down the road. So when the guests arrive there, mm-hmm. they will walk through the front door, a sensor will go off, a TV will come on in the hallway, describing to them how the house works. Right. So that will be their introduction to how that product works when they arrive so in the front door. are you removing the person interaction? Um, because this is off-site, mm-hmm. yes. But, oh, so it's a deliberate operation? Absolutely, thing. yeah. Absolutely. And if they want to speak to somebody, will there be they somebody? Can, yeah, they can pick up the phone. And but there won't be a physical person present? Uh, there won't be a physical person read. present now. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I would really like to see how that goes, because it's, I think... I, I may be a bit of a traditional hotelier, a traditional service person, right? I, you know, that's important yeah. to me. Yeah. The physical interaction is important. I think technology helps, but, and it may be a generational thing. I totally put my hands up to that. And I think if you're coming away with your partner, a couple of friends, to mm-hmm. say you're, you know, celebrating a birthday, special birthday, and you're coming away with five of your friends, um, and you've booked this property, mm-hmm. it's not gonna be cheap. You've got cinema rooms, lighting technology, all the mm-hmm. things we've talked about. Um, and you literally turn up, press a key, you've got the keypad, mm. you've, got, you've got the number to get in the door, you type it in the door, and then the, ro- the, ro- the house will tell you how to, how to work it. You're going to market that, yeah. so actually you're going to set up their expectations, so right. they're expecting that, which I think that's mm-hmm. the important thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, if that's my expectation, if I've been ex- set up to expect the TV screen and a high-tech experience, mm-hmm. that's great. Yeah. It's when we don't get that bit. It's about you know, creating something from a marketing point of view. So the use of video, or back to video and mm. photography, is, is so easy to sell your product by using great mm. photography and great video. And it's the most important thing. So and most hotels now, you know, if I could give anyone advice, and it's I still, if I go on hotel websites, mm-hmm. all the time, obviously I'm looking at hotels all the time, is the amount of hotels that are not using video. I mean, it's very rare I actually find a hotel that is using video in their marketing. Mm-hmm. And this still it hasn't clicked for some reason that that is the most powerful tool mm-hmm. that they have to sell that product. It's so easy to do, mm-hmm. it's not expensive to do, and it's the most powerful marketing tool that they have. And when it comes to using it on social media, that's what Facebook want, to yeah. want. that's yeah. what Instagram want. It's, it's video, mm-hmm. um, and that can be you know used across so many different channels and be in your own websites. Mm-hmm on YouTube and everywhere else that uh, we can put video now. It's it's the most powerful marketing tool out there. Now, what's the repeat business like? What's it, what, you know, when somebody's come here, are you a one-off that people are, oh, are gonna try that experience or do people come back again and again? And this again? is hard. Right. This is a hard area because I think repeat business now is much harder to keep because people have a lot of choice. Mm-hmm. And we all like new experiences, mm-hmm. you know, and this is partly what we're talking about, is creating new experiences. So not only am I having to create new experiences and, and do new developments, customers can come back to me and experience something different, maybe with a friend, mm-hmm. maybe with you know, the partner, but, but the next product that we've created. Yeah. That's how I'm focusing on bringing back repeat business. Right. Is giving them another experience. What's my next experience that I'm going to create? So the next to logical bring step them back. Yes. So they've come, yeah. they've enjoyed the, this suite, but why don't you come and yeah. enjoy the church? Stayed in, yeah. in, in, in a standard room, say, yeah. or, um, and they come back and stay in a suite. And then maybe they'll come back and stay in a house. Mm-hmm. And then they'll come back with friends and stay in a house. Um, and then when they're here, this is why we're opening bars and mm-hmm. restaurants, is so that they go and have an experience and have some amazing cocktails and have some great food in a cool atmosphere and mm. done differently like we do like, you know like we do things differently it's it's about so re, repeat business is about giving them something new giving them the next experience 
people who come to visit, what are they coming to experience? Is it the lake? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, the hills and the mountains are never going to go away. Yeah. So the weather is challenging here in the lake. We all know that. Um, it can be quite wet. Mm -hmm. The weather brings people to the Lake District. I mean, we, I think we have around 12 million people a year that come through Bowness. Right. So it's a very, very busy place. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, you know, Cumbria as a whole is, this, is the busiest place outside London in the UK. Really? More people visit Cumbria than anywhere else in the UK. Yeah. I, the Lake District is just a special place. It's mm -hmm. a romantic, beautiful place to be. When mm -hmm. the sun's out, it's beautiful. Uh, when it's raining, it can be beautiful. It's amazing how many people haven't visited the Lake District within mm -hmm. two or three hours drive, but when they do, um, you know, it, it's, it's an amazing experience. So, and, and also, in an area like this, um, a lot of businesses are old school mm -hmm. businesses that yeah. have been passed down from generation to generation. And a lot of the people that are running those businesses mm -hmm. are what I would call not that business savvy in a modern day market. Right. So when you come to somewhere like the Lake District and you have a different approach to how you how you you know do the things we've talked about, which is creating something unique, looking after your staff, you know, driving your staff with your own sort of drive and passion, is very few business owners have that up here. Right. So we automatically stand out in what we do. Yeah. Because actually <clears throat> we do it differently. It's not been passed down to us, no. uh, like a lot of the businesses have in the lakes. So, yeah, so we, we you stand created, out. you have yeah. the, the first draw of marketing, yeah. you know, Purple Cat stand out. Yeah. The challenge you must have therefore is, do you find it challenging to recruit staff that understand yes. that it's not just the same as everyone else? Correct, yeah. And I mean, we all know <clears throat> that a lot of our staff now are foreign staff. Right. We have an awful uh, lot of Polish people that, w that work for me. They are amazing people. Mm -hmm. They're amazing members of, uh, of staff. And, you know, we couldn't survive without them in this mm -hmm. country. They are, they're so important to, 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 to the growth and giving customers a great experience because a lot of them really do care about what they do. And also, the fact that we have a lot of foreign people, foreign employees yes. in the hospitality industry in the UK is nothing new. We don't realise, I think, that this ethic of service, when you go to places like the Waterside Inn, um, there are a number of English people there, but there's a lot of not English people there. Mm -hmm. It's not that he wouldn't hire English people there, it's just that they're not arriving with the passion of service. Correct. And he talks about service as a very specific thing. Serving is about giving people pleasure. Mm -hmm. And giving people pleasure, you have to understand what they want. Yes. And I, you know, walking around last night and looking at the menus and things like that, and those restaurants get filled. People are here, they're going to eat. Yes. If I was going to choose to go and eat in the restaurants and, and go into one that I thought would be really exciting, there wasn't much out there that really caught my attention. No. And gave me the vibe. No. Because it, it was traditional. So I actually went and had a time. That, that's why we're building one. Right? What was the advert? You know, I, I like the razors. I like the company so much to walk the company. Remington Razors or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. So Your challenge, therefore, is to create experiences that match yeah. the one you're giving in the rooms. Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, it, it's, it's about... So our customers come in and, and stay with us in one of our suites, our mm. houses, our rooms. Um, and then we can then send them into the village for different experiences, mm -hmm. but within our own products, yeah. really. Um, so the cocktail bars, the restaurants that we're opening, um, this will be another restaurant where we're sat here. Right. Um, and it's about giving that customer some choice, but mm -hmm. some high quality choice, and then making sure that we deliver on that in relation to you know how we do things as a Cranley brand, really. Are you changing the demographic of the customer that's coming to Windermere? Yes, I have done since we opened, yeah. So you're bringing a different type of person to uh, Yes, village. definitely. And how's that impacting the village? Uh, in a positive way, because they're spending money in the village. Right. Um, and, you know, our, our, our market is primarily couples right. um, coming away for a romantic, for a romantic experience and coming <coughs> together in the Lake District. Uh, and, you know, a lot of my marketing is focused on, um, on that. So, you know, you, you, we all deserve a break and we all deserve some time together. You know, as we, we all know we live extremely busy lives nowadays mm -hmm. and to find the time to spend with your partner can be challenging. Yes. Uh, we're always connected in some way through our phones or our, you know, tablets, etc., etc. And switching off and relaxing is really, really important. But at the same time, they want to be able to use that technology when they come. Yeah. You know, we don't want to actually be completely turned off 
because we need to check our emails, we need to make sure our kids are okay, and we need to do the basic things. Um, but why not do it in the Lake District where it's beautiful? You've created this amazing experience here in Windermere through a, a group of properties and group of experiences ranging from, you know, as you said, your standard room to your amazing suites to your new six bedroomed uh, cottage. Yeah. The restaurant coming, the bars. Yeah. What, what does the Cranley Boutique represent to your customer now? How I would think about it 10 years ago to how I think about it now is very, very different. Mm -hmm. So where I get my enjoyment is by, by building, creating new ideas and new products. Uh, so what does the Cranley represent? It's, it's probably one of the most well-known brands of hotels in the Lake District, mm -hmm. and that's been developed in only 10 years. Right. Um, it's talked about all over the place online, mm -hmm. um, and it represents you know, a boutique quality experience in the Lake District. That's what we're about, and also pushing the boundaries in how we build and create new experiences for our customers. Mm -hmm. That's very much the forefront of what we're trying to do, um, and that changes all the time. It's so important to always be changing what you do to a certain degree, in my opinion. Some hoteliers would disagree with that, but I think we have to change the product um, or give them more of what you do in a different way. But I think what you're talking about, um, go back to my high tech, high touch. Yeah. You're changing the tech. You're continually <coughs> changing. And the environment. Yeah, the physical environment. If you, if you spend lots of money on the technology. Yes. And your business operations, the way your staff behave, the way you deal with the customer and set the customer up, their expectations don't match the technology, you've probably wasted your money. Mm -hmm. But if everything in the process, mm -hmm. including the people, most importantly the people, are supporting that technology, yes. giving all the benefits to the yeah, business, absolutely. Then, it's, then it works. You've gone to another level where actually you're creating different experiences, some of them extremely technical experiences or technology-based experiences yeah. of, of really luxury and others which are closer to what most people understand of a normal hotel experience. Yes. But you're doing a whole lot. Yes. And you're progressing people through that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in, in any products that we have, you have to have a buying level. Mm -hmm. So you have to have mm -hmm. a room mm -hmm. at £120 a night, whatever is your starting room is. Mm -hmm. You know, ours go up to £550 a night with the new products that will be £1,000 a night. Mm -hmm. So it's... That's for six people, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. for six people. But uh, it's never been done before no. around here. And, uh, you know, it will be a new challenge. And I'm not scared of a challenge, but it will be pushing new boundaries, creating mm -hmm. a new, you know, something that's not been done before. So when someone says, you know, that's not going to work, so this cocktail bar that mm. we were in before, you know, that wasn't going to work. It's the most popular bar in the village now mm. um, because we do it differently and employ amazing people to do their job. Mm. And they're totally passionate about what they do. You came into this because you saw there was an opportunity for great marketing and the vehicle was going to be a hotel. Yes, in, in many respects. Basically, so, yeah. so, you, so the marketing opportunity was hit you. You know, you hit yeah. by. I headline. am not a hotelier. No, no. And then yeah. suddenly you went. Well, hang on. What if you applied that to a hotel? Yes. But then you applied some really sensible business principles Correct. as you started in the hotel. And went, oh, this is not me. I've got to get the right people. Mm -hmm. Then what you've done is said, right? If I'm going to have the right people, I'm going to create an environment around these people that supports them Correct. doing the job, which is translating your vision into reality. Yes. Then not only that, and this is the bit I really like what you said, you said, then I get coaches for them to help them sustain that level of performance. Mm -hmm. Because we're all human, it could be mm -hmm. something outside of our lives or inside of it, yep. but you, you're then supporting that. And then going back to the customer, so actually what you've done is you've taken care of the people, your people first. Yeah. And then you said, right, and now guys, the hotel's job is to do this which is we're going to create amazing experiences. We're going to push the envelope as yeah. far as we can using technology to enhance that experience whilst taking care of people who like light switches because I think that is so important because if you don't have that, oh, yeah, you exclude people. Correct, yeah. And then you're taking it another stage, which is, and now we're going to take it to the next level. What I like about that is then all of your staff are on this journey with you. So they understand it and they understand yeah, it. makes it fun. 
That's my 70%. Yeah, and, but, and you know, you <coughs> have to trust people. Oh, you yes. have to empower people to do the best that they possibly can do. The mistakes are always going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, we are human beings at the end of the day. All we can do is our very best. That's all you can expect from your staff. And as mm -hmm. long as, as long as you've given them the correct support and you're there for them and, uh, you know, you encourage them to learn from the mistakes, at the end of the day, uh, that's okay with me. Mm -hmm. I can live with that because mm -hmm. as long as I know that they're doing the best, mm -hmm. then that's all I can expect from somebody. You are in that middle gap. You're not the five-star luxury hotel. Mm -hmm. You're not the Premier Inn's the yep. budget hotels. You're, you're creating something very unique and special in the boutique sector, yep. which, is, which is an amazing sector, I think. Um, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. It has lots of breadth, of variety. But a lot of people in that sector, especially those, the, the ones that haven't yet found their bit, if you like, so often I see the owners or people involved with running those properties get stuck and they're not looking outside. How much time do you spend looking out versus looking into your business? Most of the time. Most of the time you're looking out because mm -hmm. you trust the people behind you mm -hmm. running it. Yeah, I'm looking ahead. I'm looking at how we can do things better or differently um, um, and, and what else we can do and mm -hmm. how else we can expand. But yes, I've got a great team. We're expanding our products. Uh, we're offering different things, different experiences all the time, um, and trying to improve what we have. Knowing what I know now, I'd, 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 I'd do things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in a market that works for us mm -hmm. very well in the Lake District. Mm -hmm. The property that we're in now will be the next phase of our development, which mm -hmm. will be 14 new suite, 14 mm -hmm. new uh, rooms, mm -hmm. which will be residences, mm -hmm. um, and they will be very low. Um, amount of staff here mm -hmm. managing those people because mm -hmm. I think people um, are pulling away a little bit mm -hmm. from, um, from you know if we want to go away and just be alone with our partners mm -hmm. but we need to know that basically if we need anything or want anything it's there it. but we don't want to be disturbed yeah I think this is what service is about is understanding and this is what actually I think luxury is about luxury from my perspective is truly understanding what your guest wants yeah the whole experience and then delivering it with grace yes. and elegance. That is that. So to those people out there, if there was one nugget of advice you'd say to somebody who wants to take their property from where it is now forward to go on that journey, what would you say that one thing is? What that wants to make the hope their product more successful yeah. is learn about marketing. Learn about marketing. Absolutely, without a doubt. And use video and lots of it. Um, but it, it, it's le they have to learn about how the psychology of their customers, mm -hmm. what is it that actually makes them buy? Mm -hmm. And to do that, um, you have to you have to study. Yeah. You know, I've read every book you can possibly think about. You know, on business and marketing psychology, and it those are the most. Though that's what's going to give you the edge. Right. That's what's going to attract people to you. And then yes, you've got to be able to deliver that when they get there. Um, but you've got to get them there. Most people focus too much on the day-to-day -day stuff in the business and not how we're going to get customers to them. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's really, really important you know, to look after the customer when they're It's absolutely vital. You've got to get the customers there in the first place. Do you find it difficult to recruit staff here? Uh, yes. And how do you go about that? What's your best tactic for that? Uh, I mean, we try and go about it through using people that work for us. Right. That's our first point of call always is recruit through people that, mm -hmm. that understand how we work and how we do things. And that's that's quite successful a lot of the time. Um, we do have a problem at the moment whereby I'm going to take on another 30 to 35 staff in the next year. Um, and one of the problems we've had with the new bar that we've opened is mm -hmm. because it's so high end, mm -hmm. a lot of people think it's out of their reach to work there. Right. That it's too high end for them that they're going to feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. because of the expectations that high, mm -hmm. um, which has been interesting. But we're finding that the people that do come to us mm -hmm. um, are ambitious, hardworking um, people that, that can actually communicate with our customers. Because if someone's come and worked <laughs> in that bar on their CV, I mean, if they come and work yeah. for you for a season or two seasons here, mm -hmm. to then go and want to work in a city location and a top end bar in the city, 
they're going to have the experience. Yes. They're going to have the knowledge. Yeah. We're, we're, we've created a city bar in a village, yeah. basically is what we've done. We're because it's in a village, the pressure won't be on them as much as it would be in the city bar, but it's right. still, it, it's a fantastic, if they want yeah. that's the route they want to go in yeah. life, what a wonderful place Absolutely, to and we've created something that the right people want to work for. Mm -hmm. If <clears throat> all the barmen that we have there are all professional mixologists, mm -hmm. they can all fly, they can mm -hmm. all they can, they all can create a show. We've got every single one of the mixologists and flare environment in this area working for us. Right. There's no one else that you can go and get that experience. There's not another barman that I know of that can do what, what these guys can do in this yeah. village. Um, but we've created a really great, fun environment to the point where <clears throat> I bring a coach in to coach mm -hmm. my entire team every mm -hmm. month. We close down for a morning um, and we work on different skills. Brilliant. It might be... Um, so we took them uh, gill scrambling for the day mm -hmm. uh, about f about eight weeks ago and took them out into the into the Lake District mm -hmm. and gave them a Lake District experience. And a lot of these people that work for us were Polish and have never experienced the Lake District. Right. They've just worked here. Yeah. They'd not been in the water or out in the sun or on a mountain. Mm -hmm. So that experience to them was massive. Mm -hmm. um, and we used that as a training day to come up with our core values of what the Fizzy Tart brand stands for mm -hmm. and what that looks like, but allowed them to create that. So it allowed them to create what it is they saw um, the Fizzy Tart yeah. as yeah. and what it was going to deliver to our customers. Mm -hmm. So we've created our standards and our values um, um, and the five most important things mm -hmm. for that business. Yeah. And at the top of that list is fun. Brilliant. So. It's about customers having fun, and it's about the staff having right. fun. And what I love about that, I, I do um, um, a workshop with clients, which is over over a few days, which is developing the behaviour standards. Yeah. And it's about getting the staff of that business to, you know, the owners saying, "Hey, this is our vision for our business. Now, you tell how we're going to create that, and what are the behaviour standards?" And it comes down to always to four or five real basic things. Often, the first one, and they re and they realise it from a management perspective, is is like a safety thing, which, you know, we've got to get that bit right, because otherwise, you know, we're going to make a really stupid mistake. Yeah. And then it always gets to the performance, the fun, the theatre, yeah. the something about engaging the customer. Absolutely. And the third, the third, fourth and fifth one sort of are sort of like the future growth of the business. And when I talk to the managers afterwards, they go, yeah, but I can solve any problem with a member of staff with number one or number two, because after that, it's not problems, it's about creating the future. And it's about creating something. These two are where the problems occur, because it's always in simple things that go wrong, and simple things that get missed. But it said keeping that performance up, these ones flow. And what the uh, one phrase that always sticks in my mind is um, part of the spirit was one particular hotel, and the, one of their values was spirit, and is I am the main ingredient. So to every member of staff, I am the main ingredient. Yeah, very good. And when I talked to the housekeepers about that, they looked at it and went. No, I get it, yeah. Because yeah. actually, if there is a hair in the bath yeah. or a toenail by the bed, that can destroy the whole experience. Yeah, absolutely. So at that moment, in that point, every member of your staff gets yeah. the main Should be empowered. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's lovely. Steve, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much for putting me up last night. And it's, and it's sunshine outside. I'm going to do a shot in a minute outside and just um, do a little promo for it. But thank you so much for this. Um, you have been, if like, the Facebook king. I know it's got challenging now. What's the next vehicle for you that's going to be the, the killer marketing tool for you? Good question. <laughs> uh, we're working on lots of different things at the moment, but the <laughs> Facebook's obviously very, very important. We're, we're constantly growing on Facebook. We use Facebook every day. The trick with Facebook is just post a lot. Mm -hmm. just, just, just give content, content, mm -hmm. content, and lots of it. Most people think, oh, just post once a day. No, 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 no. You need mm. to be doing it several times a day. Yeah. Um, and finding out when your customers um, are, are online, which is pretty much common sense because yeah. we all know when we're online, usually yeah. at night or in the morning or at lunchtime on our breaks. Um, you know, when the weather changes. Mm -hmm. I just get an instinct and I know when I can post and I know when I'll get engagement. Right. Uh, so it's just for experience that. Well, Instagram, obviously, mm -hmm. is becoming very, very powerful. Um, and that's going to change like we were talking mm. about before uh, where we'll be able to market a lot more on Instagram and all the old forms of marketing work still yeah. as well so you know direct mail um, email marketing works mm. obviously it's it's we are all bombarded with emails mm. as we know but it's about breaking through that as best as you possibly can yeah. 
um, and tracking that and monitoring it and having your weekly statistics so you can see what's working and not and testing new stuff all the time. So if you were going to say to these hotels that are trying to p improve their performance, yeah. would you say hire a really good marketer? Um, or get someone trained really good in the, the techniques and skills of the marketer? One of the biggest game changes for me mm -hmm. in business was bringing that skill set in-house. So when we have a meeting on a Monday morning to discuss, you know, how things have been the last mm -hmm. week, or you know, are we, are we, are we, um, you know, how are we to target this month yeah. and next month? Is we can make a decision that morning and send an email out through my own team that day. That's what gives us an edge in marketing. Mm -hmm. Is we can do it in house. Right. So bringing these skilled people in to work for me full time is probably the biggest and most important thing that I've done. In my business, and the return on that investment has been oh yeah, absolutely because yeah. we've got it in house. Yeah, exactly. If we outsource stuff all the time, you're constantly chasing people to do things for you, um, and they never do it fast enough. Last question, really, to you. You've got here. You have amazing plans for the next couple of years. Just what's the biggest external challenge you see facing you? Just expect that there are going to be challenges around every yeah. corner. Trying to keep on top of the way that the world is going and adapting to it continually and not thinking it's just gonna stay the same, because yeah. it can't. Right. So you have to be open to change, and your staff have to be open to change, because the world is changing all the time, so we've got to go with it. Mm -hmm. You can't fight it. No. You know, someone said to me a long time ago, you know, you either ride the waves or fight them. So if you fight the waves, you're gonna get knocked over at some point. Mm -hmm. So you've got to learn to ride the waves, um, and you've got to learn new skills, be constantly on a journey of learning yourself, mm -hmm. Um, which is quite exciting. You you spend your time working on your business. Always. Yeah. And working on the business. And I say for, for if you're working in the business, yeah. you will never be able to grow. No, because you can't you can't see outside. So yeah. guys, um we're very lucky to have had this time with Stephen today. Um there's lots of nuggets in there and yes there will be a little download you can get which will be as my summary and some key points for you to think about. But I think the number one point Steve's talked about today, which yeah, if you want your business to grow, stop working in it and make your you are working on it because you, that means finding the right people that you can trust to run it behind you. Vital. Yeah, and people don't believe that those people are there, and I can assure you that they are. Oh, they are. Yeah. So, so the people we've spoken to so far on these interviews, all of them, yes, they hire great people, but that's not where it finishes. It's hiring people with the right competence and attitude and then developing them within your business. You know, The hospitality industry is a mobile business. People move through us. Um, Diego talks about 17 months to two years before people start to move on to other places. That's part of our job, build it into the plan. But find your key, key lieutenants, find your key management people yep. that you I absolutely look trust, <laughs> look after them, challenge them effectively, challenge them in a way that they feel they're contributing to the business. But most of all, work on the business, look outside. Is that about right? Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Okay, so that was number five. Um, number six is going to be slightly different, but uh, I'll let you find out about that when we get it. So thanks to Stephen Hargreaves, and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.